The hardest part about building a PC is finding the perfect parts for whatever your budget is. Today, we are going to take a look at the absolute best PC you can build with new parts for just $500. Let's do this. What's going on guys i'm brian and today we are gonna get you guys started on the path to building yourself a 500 hundred dollar pc per usual this video is not intended to show you guys actually how to build a pc but rather to show you which parts you should be getting and kind of like the performance you should be expecting out of the parts that you've picked up if you are searching for a how to build a PC guide, however, check up in the cards up there or the description box below for my video series I did on that a few weeks ago. Now today we will be targeting four specific things. The first is going to be going over each component in the build and explanation of why I picked each part. Um, the second is going to be like, what if you had more money? So if you had an extra $50 or an extra $100, um, the third is, is going to be going over the PC's gaming performance. I have seven games picked out and I tested them all on an 1080p high settings. And then the last is going to be my final thoughts on who should actually go out and build this P PC and what you should kind of expect out of this PC. All right, so a couple things before we get into the parts list. First off, I, as typical of these videos, I did not include tax and shipping when putting together these lists. Um, and this is basically because tax and shipping you know, fees vary heavily from place to place. Secondly, part pricing does change quite often. If you go out and you check the, out the um, parts list and then the cost has gone up, feel free to let me know in the comments below and I'll do my best to give you guys some alternatives. Also, if you are new here, consider subscribing for more tech content just like this and be sure to like the video if you end up enjoying it. Okay, so on to the components. If you have by chance caught my um, January parts list video that I did back in January. Um, this list is actually gonna be very similar to that list. There are a couple different changes, especially when it comes to like the storage. Um, but again, they're basically the same. So I would recommend just skipping this portion of the video and then jumping over to the benchmarking portion of the video. Um, because again, you've already kind of heard what I'm going to be saying about the components. So starting off with the CPU, we have the Ryzen 5 1600AF. Um, for those of you who don't know, this guy is just a 2600 in disguise and it can ha be had for just 85 bucks. It has six cores and 12 threads and it's absolutely perfect for a budget gaming, streaming, slash editing um, PC just like this that we're trying to put together. The motherboard I chose for this build is the ASRock B450M HDV. And since this is a $500 budget build, you do have to make some slight sacrifices. And I'll tell you right now, this is certainly one of the sacrifices that you have to make. The HDV is more than capable of handling the 1600 AF, even if you decided you wanted to overclock it. But if you decided to like upgrade your chip in the future, that is where your issues will begin with this board. This board will be able to take an eight core chip, um, but I certainly wouldn't recommend trying to overclock that eight core chip on this board at all. Moving forward, I have PC Power Breaker using a parametric filter for your memory kit. As I often say, read reviews on the kit before you actually go out and buy the kit, um, just to make sure that the filter didn't select a dud. The filter is set to give you a 16 gig kit of 3,200 or 3,600 megahertz. For storage, you really have two options here. The first would be to pick up the cheapest 500 gig SSD available on the market. Right now you can actually grab the a Team G GX1 SSD for about $57. Now on the other hand you can also go for like a two drive setup. This is what I opted for in the actual parts list and if you follow the parts list you will end up getting a 240 gig SSD along with a 500 gig hard drive. The SSD would be strictly for like OS and then some programs and you might be able to fit one or two games on there while the hard drive will be absolutely perfect for your games either option works and it's truly up to your preference whether or not you want to have like more storage or more ssd storage the graphics card i chose for this build is going to be the rx 574 gig model you can pick these up um, brand new for about 120 dollars 
and as you'll see in a few minutes you'll be able to play about 60 at about 60 fps on high 1080p in most modern games if you are willing to buy used i would recommend checking out the subreddit hardware swap since this is an older graphics card you are able to get them up for a pretty hefty discount um, on there i see them all the time going for going used for about 80 bucks now for the case we chose my favorite budget case i talk about it all the time on this channel and it's the p uh it's the p300a from fantex and quite frankly it's basically one of the cheapest cases you can actually get nowadays and i know there are technically cheaper ones out there but most of those cheaper ones when i was doing all my research they have shipping charges they charge you for shipping and well at least you know again for me and well if you're gonna have to spend the 50 dollars either way you might as well pick up the case that's a little bit nicer at that $50 price point. And the Fansex 3 uh, P300 at this point in time doesn't have that shipping. So instead of spending $35 on a case and then another, you know, eight to $10 on shipping, just get the, you know, the P300. And so the last part of this bill is going to be the EVGA BQ 500 watts, 80 plus bronze semi-modular power supply. <sighs> So that's a that's a that's a lot. Um, it's a great unit that I've used a few times now, and although I would prefer to have like a 550 watt or a 600 watt unit for this build, um, the 500 watt unit will be more than enough for what's currently in the build and for some minor upgrades down the road. All right, so that is the entire build. What you actually what the parts you're gonna actually pick up, and as of right now of shooting this video, it comes in at $499.91 plus tax and shipping after that $10 rebate you'll have on the case. Um, but what if you had like an extra $50 or maybe an extra $100? What should you spend that extra money on? Well, if you have an extra $50, what I would say is go ahead and grab yourself an intake fan because this only comes with this, you know, the P300 only comes with one exhaust fan. So that'll be really good for your system. And then upgrade that 500 gig hard drive to a two terabyte one. I personally really like the PWM Scythe um, K's Flex 120 millimeter fans that you can get off Amazon for just like under $14 each. So that's what my recommendation for the fan would be. You can always get whatever fan you want. So anyway, if you follow this suggestion, you'll be you'll be in for about $548.96 plus tax and shipping. Again, after that $10 rebate you will have. Now, if you actually have an extra $100 Go ahead and do what I suggested before, and then also swap out that HDV motherboard for the MSI B450 Tomahawk Max. I talk about this board a lot. It's a great board, and this, this board's going to really set you up for the long haul and make upgrading the system like an absolute piece of cake. If you end up doing this, um, your total will end up being $599.96 plus your tax and shipping after that $10 rebate. And, and of course, all the prices I mentioned today, this is all U.S. So if you live in a different country, then your, you know, your pricing will definitely vary. All right, so now on to the good stuff. What type of performance will the Ryzen 5 1600 AF and the RX 570 give you? Well, to summarize the benchmarks you are about to see, you will get about 60 FPS in most modern titles at 1080p high settings. I did all the testing um, at stock settings on the GPU and the CPU because we are using the stock cooler on the CPU and I didn't feel it was realistic to kind of expect um, overclocking out of the system due to the inadequate cooling for it. Now, if you were to add an intake fan and an aftermarket cooler in the future and overclock this CPU and GPU combo, you could expect about like between five to 10% FPS boost in most games. Now, as for the benchmarking suite, I did try to provide a variety of game types in my testing. A lot of the games that I have been asked to test, I don't currently own yet. And so I've been working on adding them little to little, you know, to my library. Um, as you can imagine, I'm probably just like you guys, and I don't have a ton of extra money to go out and spend on games. And so I have to make do with what I currently, you know, have in my, my Steam library and my Epic Game Store library and so forth. Um, again, I am constantly working on adding more games to test. Um, for you guys. So keep letting me know in the comments what you guys would like to see so that I can keep trying to gather those games as time goes on. Okay, so all games were tested at the game's max preset settings. If there were any modifications that I personally made to these settings, I will have them listed in the charts so that you guys are aware of the changes I made. Also, if the frames being displayed in my tests aren't up to what you guys are expecting or what you guys like, um, you can always, you know, bring down a couple settings to help boost your frame rate. You know, this is a budget build. You'll be able to do, you know, 1080p um, high settings in, in most games, but keep in mind that you will have to, you know, 
down um, some settings here and there depending on which game because of how demanding the game is. And with that said, you know, here are the benchmarks. So as you can see, this system is a pretty solid performer in the 1080p high settings environment, especially when you take a look at the actual price. But that still keeps like the looming question of who exactly is this PC for wide open. And you know, the answer could simply be if you have a budget of $500, this is the system you should buy, which is true, but it also doesn't make sense to recommend this build to someone who will be disappointed with the results and the performance of this build. Instead, I could recommend a different build and they could, you know, a little, maybe a little bit more expensive build and they could save a bit more money and get a build that's gonna fit their needs better. All right, so this build is a perfect entry build for anyone who has a 60 to 75 for 1080p monitor and they just want to get into PC gaming, maybe a little bit of streaming and some video editing. Um, you can see from the gaming benchmarks that this build really does a great job at 1080p high settings. <laughs> Additionally, this build will work fine if you decided you want to stream um, at 1080p 60 FPS. But in my opinion, if streaming is really what you want to focus on, it's not just gaming, it's not you know video editing for like YouTube, it's streaming, I would highly recommend getting something like the 1650 Super for about $60 more. And the reason behind this is because the 1650 Super has that NVENC encoder. Um, and for those of you who don't know, the Turing NVENC encoder is like absolutely game changing. And I seriously will not recommend a build for someone who wants to stream without a um, without a GPU that has that Turing NVENC encoder, especially if you only have one PC, you're not gonna do a, you know, a dual PC setup. Lastly, this build is gonna be a beast in video editing. You will have no problem making solid videos for YouTube with this rig. So with that said, if you want a game at 1080p 60 FPS, stream every so often and make some content for YouTube, but you don't have a massive budget, this build will definitely get your foot in the door. If you ended up enjoying this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you hated it, you know what to do, but please take a second to let me know why in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe for more content just like this and feel free to ask questions down below as well. Thank you guys so much for watching.